Welcome to Titan Radio Live, a collaboration effort between Titan TV and Titan Internet Radio. I'm Raylan Taylor, your host, and Ship of the Rising Sun is in our studio at Titan Communications playing some new music. And if you like what you hear, follow them on social media at ReverbNation.com slash Ship of the Rising Sun. Take it away, guys. It is dark, and all I see is blue, black and blue. Back into my head, back into your bed, back into my head. Until I read it right, until I read it wrong. Yeah, 
While they take a break, let's see what Ship of the Rising Sun is all about. Started by founding trio members Azuri Zen Moon, Casey Cohn, and Danny Bialo, and finally completed with Uriel Moon, Ship of the Rising Sun emerged out of the fragmented pieces of past musical groups. This genre-testing rock fusion band with strong ideals found its current lineup in summer of 2012 and has since been playing all over the Los Angeles area, spreading their classic rock, jazz, funk, and world music influences to try and stand on the forefront of a new fusion genre. They are professional and well-practiced, even opening up for such bands as Flock of Seagulls. All right, now that we know them, let's actually meet them. We have Imani Jackson in the studio right now with Ship of the Rising Sun. Imani, what's going on, girl? Hey, Raylin, I'm here with one of the coolest bands I know, Ship of the Rising Sun. And I mean, you could tell how cool they are by their style and their sound, which leads me to my first question. Where did you guys develop your fashion sense from? I see you're over here wearing the wolf hat, just swagging it out. So I just want to know, what inspires you guys when you wake up? Um, you uh, I think that Yuri is really what inspired all of us because he does this naturally and we were all... This just is how I dress every up. day. And uh, yeah, I, I always have dressed pretty, pretty wild. I always like colors. I've always liked a lot of things ever since I was a little kid. So I kind of just kind of evolved and, and become more more freaky <laughs> as it's gone on and i kind of do things it, yeah. it we, we also have a lot of we have hippie parents so we have a lot of like yeah. Uh, yeah. world influences yeah. into our fashion and with yuri in the front unless we get really crazy and get like crazy pants we could look kind of silly so we had to kind of step it up a bit yeah danny can't be wearing a suit and tie <laughs> nope. i'm like i'm loving it you got the stripes and the roses and then cardigan going there i love it you guys are really dope and since i'm on appearance i just gotta know is there like a hair requirement length to be yes. a part of we this get band? asked that so much <laughs> like, um and yes there is yes oh really like yeah it's it's it? it's like <laughs> I gotta it's know. gotta be at least shoulder length like uh oh least. can't no, be like a not. chicken no, head up inaccurate. here no. you gotta be no. hanging we've no. all been we oh. no, <laughs> no, no chickens so i fit you know, I fit in yeah, with yeah. them right now. <laughs> so I got to ask, I got to ask you about your moves. I see you were up here just getting it, and it was just so free and flowy. So where did you learn your moves, or was it really a type of learning thing, or was it just do and feel? When I was about 13 years old, I started watching a lot of uh, game shows and YouTube videos, like America's Best Dance Crew and stuff, and I was like, I need to learn this. <laughs> so I ended up training for like two or three years online with this guy right here, actually, he was practicing with me for a while. And then we met this guy named Miguel when I was about 16, 17 years old. And he just was already a trained dancer, and he decided to teach us a bunch of this stuff, brought us into the crump world, which I started crumping a bunch. And uh, I've just kind of practiced ever since now. But, yeah, it was because of, like, TV shows. And That's really best cool. dance I was like, I need to do that. <laughs> That's really cool because I'm sitting here, I'm like, is he crumping up here? <laughs> I'm like, should I battle him? Should, I, oh, should we get this yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that should absolutely happen. Uh oh. Oh. Another time. Like, maybe. Another time. Yeah, Definitely. Another Let me, battle. you know, I'm not as flexible as he <laughs> is right now. <laughs> but I just got to know what's the most bizarre thing that has happened on stage? Oh, There's a lot of man. bizarre Ooh. things that have happened on stage. Um, yeah, we've I mean, had broken things. We've had pants ripped. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yuri, Yuri shattered this really old, valuable light that they had at the House of Blues before it closed down with, it, with, with my head, skull. And they never replaced it, so it just it was, was sitting gone there. Forever. Yeah, literally, oh. I was dancing, and I swung my head into the wall, and I didn't realize what happened, but the next thing I knew, there was glass at my feet, and everybody was like, just shh. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> there was another time we were playing at a, uh, a bowling alley, and there was a man behind me that was, you know, cheering me on, like, yeah, you're awesome, dude. And he was clearly intoxicated, and I was like, yeah, man, you're awesome, too. And uh, in the middle of, I just got so into my bass playing, and it was at the very end of the song, I went like this with my bass and pushed it up and hit him right oh in the God. face and almost knocked knock him out. Knockout shot. And yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> that guy got up like a champion and was like, I'm totally good. You're awesome, <laughs> You're man. You're still awesome. But, but the next time I saw him, he was like out there. Like he was way out. Like, he wasn't behind me anymore. Yeah. He's but, like, I'm not getting close so to that guy know. again. <laughs> not to get close <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. So what's your, the ultimate direction of the band? Where do you guys see yourself within like the next couple of years? Uh, I think our main goal has always been to kind of bring uh, more eclectic and world music to the forefront under the umbrella of kind of a rock um, commercial uh, genre. And so really that's kind of our main priority is just trying to expose our music to as many people as possible. Right now we're playing the OC County Fair uh, oh. in 
yeah. July. July 16th. And oh. uh, yeah, we have a bunch of things going on. So just it's like constantly about just increasing the exposure that we have to people, trying to inspire people to create music, create art, and uh, just think critically about the world, I guess. But in the words of 15 years, like Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> Hollywood Bowl, yeah. Not 15 years, like next year, right. hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Alrighty, so if you've heard it from Ship of the Rising Sun, it was a pleasure having you guys here. You guys are so dope, and I can't wait to see you guys performing at the Hollywood Bowl. I know you guys will get there. And now we're going to take it on over to Ray Lynn. Thanks, Imani. Next up, we take a look at recent releases and albums in focus. First up, we have Parquet Courts with Human Performance. Parquet Courts offers a fine testament to rock's continued power and relevance. While not explicitly political, Parquet Courts are definitely a thinking band. With mapped out beats and melodies, this album is well respected. Next, we have Painting With by Animal Collective. Rad, synthetic, and ready to directly jump into your face. Painting With hits hard from the beginning. Beginning. Painting With is a bright, eclectic, busy piece of music that cramps every element of Animal Collective sound into a landscape without depth or recess. Also, we have Phase by Jack Garrett. As the singer and multi-instrumentalist, won not only the 2016 Brit Award for Critics' Choice, but also the BBC Sound of 2016 Top Spot and the BBC Introducing Award. Garrett released a moving album of yearning power and death electronic arrangements with a dash of British Garage. Furthermore, we have Ty Seagal with Emotional Mugger. Seagal's guitar is front and center throughout this album, and the lean, busy tone of his acts defines every song. The album's melodic sense owes more to vintage glam rock than garage rock roar, yet doesn't disappoint. Finally, we have Cope from Manchester Orchestra. On Cope, they stick to a sheer wall of electric guitar grit and grayscale harmonics, which is, of course, the point, as the band wanted to adhere to a cohesive sound for the whole album. Well, that's all we have for Albums in Focus. Let's hear some more music by Ship of the Rising Sun. Stop me up, kill the sun, fill the moon with its soul. Oh. I had plans, when in doubt, know your mind's in control. Oh, what don't you know?
collaboration effort between Titan TV and Titan Internet Radio. Ship of the Rising Sun just performed a set in our Titan TV studio from their new music. And if you like what you hear, don't forget to follow them on social media at ReverbNation.com slash Ship of the Rising Sun. Thanks for watching Titan Radio Live, broadcasting from California State University Fullerton. I'm Raylan Taylor. See you next time.